hands up if you've heard of the block. Yes. Okay, so... Oh, you have? Okay, I was going to give you a bit well, of a rundown. because you don't stop talking about it. <laughs> well, that's right. So the block <laughs> is a, for those that don't know, you basically get given a shell of a massive building or a massive apartment block or whatever, and you have to renovate the entire thing, top to bottom, as a team. And every week you get judged and... You get money, blah, blah, blah. You get money for winning. And it's this big competition, renovation competition. And it's so good. And it's really, it's a big deal in Australia, I feel like. Like a lot of people watch it. Do they? Yes. Yeah, they do. So <laughs> last year's one was really good. Uh, <laughs> and there was some drama around it. Yeah. Which I feel was was talked about. But then it just disappeared. Do you remember? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was big drama. So after you finish your luxury apartment, what happens is they put up the apartments for auction and they always sell over like, you know, a couple mil easily. Now, last year, <laughs> the winning couple, which were Jimmy and Tam, they won because someone bid on their house 4.256 mil. Now, at the time, that's just like, oh, wow, they won. Jimmy and Dan, well done. And by the way, you get an extra 100 grand for winning on top of, oh, I didn't even say. So what happens is you sell your house and then there's a reserve price that the TV show gives you, basically. Anything over the reserve price that you sell for, you get to keep. So you and your partner, whoever, whoever you went on with, the other contestant, get to keep. Anything over the reserve price is yours. And then whoever wins out of everyone, whoever sells for the most, gets an additional. Do you want to, do you want to start again explaining grand. this? Seems like you're. <laughs> Are you following along? No, I, I got it. I got, got it. it. I got it. Okay. So they get I, given they get given a building. They have to renovate it. Then at the end they sell it, and basically the TV show goes, "Look, we bought it for this much, so we're getting this much back when you sell it. Yeah. Any profit on top of that, you get to keep. Yeah. Exactly. And if you win, okay. you get a hundred grand." Mine was just long-winded. Yes. So anyway, I just wanted to explain that process. <laughs> okay. Now, um, so what happened is the winning couple, yeah, 4.256 mil. <sighs> now, after that, and everyone, you know, has finished watching and hurrah, that's another year done. Channel 9, who was the channel that airs this show, well, that makes it, creates it, didn't get paid their money. They never got what was owed. The couple never got, I guess, what was owed either, I presume. And so they went investigating. Now, the winning bidder was Emmy's Fake. I don't know how you say the name. I have no idea. I'm sorry. E-M-E-S-E. -E, that's her first name. And it turns out that she is an international con woman. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. The bid, this is the bidder. The bidder. The on bidder the property. Yeah. that won. So it's someone who has nothing to do with the show. Nothing, nothing. to do with the show. Someone okay. turned up. We saw her bid. Like we were watching it. We were watching it. Like we watched the final episode with the auctions. She forced. bid. I was forced to. No, I mean, I was you, forced. Know, you can't deny you like the auction. <laughs> so she's like, you know, 4.25. I think... There was only the other person that was involved was a man, and he actually bid on all three other homes. He was a he was like a yeah. Do you remember that guy? Do you remember thing. that guy, the bidder, that bidder? She outbid him. Yeah, but do you remember how he was bidding? He was like uh, four million four hundred forty four thousand. Oh yeah. Four hundred and forty four point yeah. four four cents. That but was he his, was, that was legit, his really? and yeah. he was acting for clients. So yeah. he has clients, right? <laughs> And she, he won the other three homes for yeah. his clients and she outbid him. So we were like, whoa, okay, whew, this chick's got money. Type yeah. And I think they won by quite a while, by quite a lot. Anyway, so show finishes. She doesn't pay. TV crew go, you know, TV start looking into it and go, where's the money? Turns out, yeah, she's an international con woman that had basically done fraudulent bank statements and all this and that showing she'd paid money and everything. 
and it was a big deal at the time. She's back kind of on, well, she's on pedestrian TV. They've gone looking for her again. Why do you ask? Well, because <laughs> an ex, a disgruntled ex of hers yeah. is not happy because he scammed her as well. And he said, I'm coming out publicly because I do not want anyone else to get scammed by this woman. Mm. I think she stole his um, scuba diving equipment and a watch or something like and that. And his heart. And probably his heart. He's a cryptocurrency, Singaporean wealthy man. Mm. But yeah, he was like, nah. He was probably like, she did this to me. She will not get away with it. Mm. So anyway, a, b- a little bit about her. So she's Hungarian born. She's t- probably 28 or 29 now. Um, sh- They found her living in Madeira, which is a little Portuguese island in the middle of nowhere, um, going by another name, Abigail. And... She she was living in Australia, but she left because uh, of all the people she'd scammed and all the exes. She'd scammed people in Hungary, UK, Costa Rica, Australia. She claims that she consulted for the United Nations. She claims she graduated from University of West London and from Columbia University. She claims she owns her own company named Anakin, which is a consultancy firm. That- so... So I looked has up all these clients. that Anakin um, has a uh, Instagram page oh. and it has uh, three posts and fifty six followers. And uh, I think the I think London because she said that she uh, disbanded it or dissolved it, but uh, other people saying is uh, London or England revoked it. Oh, yeah, like the license, the licensing, and all that kind of stuff of the company. So I don't know. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, she said they it's special this company Anakin specializes in counterterrorism, peacekeeping and cybersecurity, has clients like Apple and as I said the UN. Um and she's, you know, done TED Talks and all this. All right. So, <laughs> on TED Talks on ted.com forward slash TEDx, she actually has a little bio here, a bl- a blurb. And it says, I own my own company, Anakin, a consulting firm, clients including the United Nations, Apple specializing in counter-terrorism, peacekeeping, and cybersecurity. I mean, her lie goes so deep that someone that's so credible in TED believed her. (gasps) So did she actually do the TED Talk? Uh, I started looking for it, but I couldn't find her actual TED Talk. Because she, what would she say? What would she get up there and actually say? I think she might. Oh, maybe. Are you saying cyber? Do you think she's actually smart enough to talk the talk? I mean, she's smart enough to fool everyone. I don't know. She said that she's got a, a Bachelor of a, a BSc in Behaviour Sciences and a BA in Photography. And she- this is all in, on her LinkedIn. Like, she's a full-on, deep-level con woman. I just, I think it's just incredible because you hear about con, you hear about con people, right? Con people. But when you see them, like we saw her bid on a property on something that is like a massive TV show. Yeah. It's just wild. It's so wild. Can can we um, look up um, what her ex-boyfriends have said about her? Yeah. So one of them is um, that guy, Steve Sagar Selva. Yeah. He's the Singaporean guy. And what he, does he say? Oh, he just showed like letters or she, she always airs everything on digital media. Digital media. Is that the right word? Social media. Social media. Mm, digital um, media. Mm. And so there was a screenshot of basically him saying, I want my, I know who, she, he goes, hi, M-E-Z. And then, um, I don't know if that's her name, if that's how you say it. And then brackets, Abigail, because he knows. I think no. that's her middle name. No, it's not. Yeah, that's what it says on TED Talk. It goes, Emise yeah, Abigail she Fake. Go, oh, she went by a different surname. She goes by F- Fuchs. Oh, Fuchs. Oh, she just changed it a little bit. Which is funny because her email address in that letter from him is abigailfox at gmail.com. Oh, really? I like they blurred out gmail.com. Like you can't <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. Um, and he's basically like, I'm giving you however long to give me back my things. Uh, what did they? What did she sell scuba, scuba diving gear? 
says. Oh, but. so he goes, he goes, hi, I have noticed that you have blocked me on WhatsApp. This yeah. is my only way of communication. Hence, I'm sending this email with the instruction from the Policia Funcal Senior Carlos, Senora Mendoza. I am demanding my things to be given to me by hand, capitals. <laughs> By 18th of April, 2020, Sunday, 1800 hours. I'll send you a receipt of confirmation once I've received my belongings in hand, in good condition. These are the list of my belongings. A GoPro 9 camera, valued at 509 euros. And 98 euros. And a diving watch valued at 135 euros. Failing which I will proceed to file a secondary report under blah, blah, blah. Oh, so not, it's nothing over And then the top. she just said, hi, Steve, I literally just saw your email. My lawyer will contact you tomorrow. <laughs> that was just last month. So he, but he's not the only one. There's uh, heaps. Yeah, I don't have any other articles. But the thing is now, once you've been, she can't go con artist, uh, artisting people now, Why? can she? Why? Well, because she's all over the internet. In Australia uh, and in yeah. the people, people don't. This is very niche, and again, this con woman. People don't verify these things, do they? Yeah, nah. but they'll, she can't use those names then because people will be Googling, especially if they meet online or something. They'll Google their partner probably. Can you tell me any con, uh, con men or con women that you know of? I don't know. <laughs> My point. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is like, you know how people meet online? Yeah. They'll probably input that name in Google and then all this stuff will come up about her. So, do you know something I've, I've never up... done? What? Is Google Julie and we met online. Okay, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people don't. No, 100%, 100% they don't. <laughs> they don't? No. I want to know because this has a good ending. Okay. What? The blocks. Uh, who's the owner of the block? Scotty Cam. No, no. Uh, the, the apartment that. Uh, Jimmy and Tam. The the good news for this, because most scam stories end up bad. Mm-hmm. The thing is with this story is that Channel Nine um, gave him the hundred thousand because they won, and also gave him the million dollar profit. Wow. The this is some other news, right? Mm-hmm. Not really um, exclusive news, but the house hasn't sold yet. Oh. The house is still on the market, but it's um, only invitation. Like you got to. Well, I saw that um, people were say- like people were thinking Scott bought it. Yeah. Um, Scott Cam is the host, and he denies buying it. Um, don't know too much. Channel Nine have shot down rumors that Block Host bought the property, um, but apparently he's he making, said he's not. He'd be making a killing for a host to be able to buy. Oh, he's he's oh, he no, he's top top. He's been on um, yeah. he's been on TV for he's on multi million dollar deals plus all these sponsorships. The B side word.